Welcome to the Weekly Pleb. My name is Douglas Rieger and I'm your host. You are listening to and or watching the sixth season. No, wrong. It's, it's almost not, a sixth no, season. <laughs> <laughs> My guest this week is Riley. Hello, nice to meet you. So how have you been? I've been just groovy, man. You yeah. know, just, just just scooting along. You yeah. know, learning new things every day. Hey, that's important. Yeah, yeah. you know what they say: learn a new thing every day. Keep yeah. the doctor away. <laughs> do they say that? They I do say that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with the, with, there's no other point for us to be here if you're not learning things, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's all about you know just just opening your mind. Yeah. Of yeah. course. So your family owns a pest control company. Yes, sir. Right. How long have they been doing that? Um, so my grandpa started a pest control company called University Termite and Pest Control back in 1974. Um, later on, my dad met my mom through college parties or whatever, <laughs> um, and eventually ended up working for my grandpa for a number of years um, until they my my they, it was a great you know relationship and all, but my dad just kind of saw the whole thing you know going in a different direction and, and, you know, being more profitable or whatever. Um, so in 2014, he started his own company, Horn Pest Management, beautiful mug, beautiful hat. As you can see from the merchandise. Remember the name. Yeah. Uh, forget the rest. Horn Pest Management. I will. It's the best. I will be invoicing your dad for this. Oh uh, yeah. It's uh, yeah. Commercial. Uh Um, uh, and then yeah, 2014, he started Horn Pest and like it, it was crazy how well it, you know, just took off and it, um, you know, all that junk. Um, a couple years later, uh, Horn Pest Management ended up merging or buying, uh, university pest control. So now they're under the same roof. Two different companies, but same management and all that. Yeah, it's nice that they were able to like reclaim your grandpa's legacy. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah, so now we got we got all those like old, you know, good employees that we mm. grew up knowing and loving, and yeah. they're all still with us, and it's going really well. So I would imagine that the pest industry in the desert <laughs> is pretty pretty good. Yeah, know? yeah. I mean, I, I've always been told it's it's a it's a recession proof kind of <laughs> business, just like you know all the other ones. You're always gonna need bu- uh, bugs killed. Yeah, right? people. Yeah. There's always gonna be bugs, and there's always gonna be people who uh, don't want don't want <laughs> bugs in their house. Yeah, don't want to share a living space with mm-hmm. some cockroaches. Right? No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nasty stuff. So, so, what are some of the most common pests that you've deal with you know? um I, i'd say the most common things are either cockroaches or pack rats um cockroaches uh like ironically enough the ones we get called out most for are american cockroaches mm-hmm. which are the big old like scary looking ones like like an inch like yeah. maybe inch and a quarter long yeah. Um, but like I said, ironically enough, those ones you don't really need to worry too much about. We like the Americans, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, we don't <laughs> we don't like them, but um, um, as long as you don't have a big old leak in your house, uh-huh. like with a, just a ton of water for them to survive, they can't go more than a couple of days without a water source. Oh, okay. Um. So and they just come up from your drains and and they they you know wander around your house eventually die because they don't have any water or any way to get back to the sewer. Yeah. Um. So and though yeah those those aren't too bad of a deal big of a deal, but uh, German cockroaches yeah. are uh, a little bit a little bit more risque. <laughs> uh, <laughs> They, uh, they, they, they're certainly easily treatable, um, but it's just, it's just all about, you know, noticing when, when they're there, like you could see their eggs in your pantry or your cupboards or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It just looks like little tiny black dots. Ooh. Um, yeah. So if you ever, you know, open a drawer or like look underneath your sink and see little black dots or like, you know, like hopefully not a dead cockroach sitting yeah, there. Yeah. Um, it's just so good to let someone know early on 
Um, well, I'd rather find a dead cockroach under my sink than a, mm-hmm. a bunch of live ones jumping out at me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They do get aggressive. <laughs> yeah, like, like, like that se- scene in The Mummy. Yeah. The scene where like, all the cockroaches come out of the crack. Uh. Uh, yeah. yeah. So German ones are the ones to worry about. Yeah, German ones are, yeah, the ones to worry about. They're, they're a little bit smaller, or they're much smaller, probably about half the size, like maybe half an inch long. Um, and they, you know, they'll hide as well as they can for as long as they can. Mm-hmm. Until you know they start to get pushed into spaces where you'll notice them, um, and at that point, it's it's very important to um, you call a pest control company, yeah. call, um, call horn pest management, call horn pest management. Yeah. You look us up online. <laughs> we'll put the we'll put the link in the description for you guys. I don't know about that. We'll one. work on it. We'll, we'll see if we can do that for you. <laughs> if you see one, there's many more. Right. For sure. And it was like a constant problem at this place. Mm -hmm. Like big enough of a problem that I'm not going to call out the restaurant, but uh, they delivered pizzas. And if you had a new pizza driver, one of the first things they were trained to do is to shake out the bags before going out because they had actually served a pizza in front of somebody with a cockroach on top of the (sighs) box. It was like in the back, right? Yeah. And if it's that big of a problem, like I'm thinking health inspector needs to walk in. Yeah. Right. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's a lot of the times how, um, especially cockroaches, German cockroaches can get spread into your home is through your friends or, you know, food, like, like nasty food delivery places like that, which you really don't have any idea that they're that nasty. Yeah. But someone could walk into your house with just like eggs that they stepped on, on their shoe that 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 would be like a real nasty house that they're coming from. Yeah. Um. Or just like a cockroach just burrowing in their in their in their purse or in their their oh, shoe. Oh man. Or, okay. Yeah. Any <laughs> kind of gross stuff like that. It's yeah. no, no good stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, are there any uh, insects or pests that you would consider basically invincible or unbeatable? Smart, um, smarter than humans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's a, that's a good way of putting it. Um. Well. There are no, you know, not one insect is like unstoppable, yeah. but there are times like I'm sure anyone from Tucson, Arizona noticed last summer, those black, like stink bug looking beetles were just running crazy all over the place. And same with like the crickets and same with the, the, the American cockroaches, those big cockroaches. Uh, they, there's just so many of them and they come from places that like they, the, those big black beetles and the cr- the crickets, they come from the dirt. They the, mm-hmm. they lay their eggs in the ground, and then once it's you know good enough time or long enough time, they come up from the ground, and then they just march randomly to yeah. wherever you know they think they might find a mate or a home to you know shelter. Yeah. Um, and at that point, there's just so many of them. There's no way to to prevent um, to to get rid of where they're coming from. Yeah. So unless you you know completely seal off your house that's going to prevent them from getting inside but there's nothing that's going to be able to prevent them from you know just cramming up against your door or, <laughs> or just just you know waiting outside for you to open the door yeah and all that journey. ringing the doorbell <laughs> uh, yeah they'll do that they'll ring the doorbell yeah i've seen one with uh, a fake mustache no kidding uh-huh and, yeah, and he was to get he was telling me he was delivering a pizza <laughs> and then he, you know, came to the door with a pizza box, opened yep. it up, and not only was he a beetle with a pizza box, yeah. there was cockroaches inside the pizza. Oh man, he, yeah. he really fooled you there. He it bamboozled was ridiculous, you. Yeah. <laughs> and I asked, "Well, <laughs> give me the manager." <laughs> and then I get the, I get on the phone with the manager, and it's this guy right here, me from the pizza place. That oh you were man, yeah, it was ridiculous, man. I thought you were going to say it was another beetle on the phone. <laughs> 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 yeah, it, it, especially with dogs, you, you got to be careful with, with yeah. Havelina. Uh, I, I let her bark at them a little bit just to help keep them away from my area. But any, other, that works. any other tips <laughs> on what to do? Um, yeah, so, Shoot so them. <laughs> yeah, Havelina, yeah, Havelina are, are they're, they're, they're um, protected part of the year. There is a hunting season for Havelina, oh. and people, people do eat Havelina. Oh, um, yeah, man. I know, which sounds gross. I, I've never tried it, but um, sounds like I mean, dirty bacon. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like eating like like a bottom feeder. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, but I mean, we love uh, yeah. lobsters and and, yeah, and shrimp good. and whatnot. Um, but uh, yeah, like they're they're extremely just just resilient 
Um, the I would say the best way to, to prevent them from bothering you or your home is to just build a fence. Just right. just just try and keep them away. Um, maybe you know you could you could you could put some lights out if you can't build a fence. Oh. You can have a light shining on your front yard all the time, and that that might deter them a little bit more. But as long as you have you know like tasty plants outside, or yep. especially in the hot summer months, like a like a source of water. Mm. They're gonna take advantage of that, and they're gonna dig out your your nice soft like wet soil and yeah. just bathe in there. <laughs> yeah, they're munching in this in the plants out here, and there's mm-hmm. like a grass area further down that they're rolling around in the dirt and the soil, yeah, and the mud. They they really just don't care about no, yeah. I've pigs. I've gone out one time at my parents' house. We we have a javelina problem there. Yeah, they just keep on coming and and coming and coming and eating my mom's plants. And one night I went out with our BB gun <laughs> and there was just a bunch of javelinas, you know, yeah. and I, I shot a javelina with a BB gun and it's, I, I'm sure it hurt. Like yeah. if I got shot with that BB gun, that would really hurt. He was unfazed, wasn't but he? The, yeah, he just like, he like, like looked up, like ran like 10 feet like forward <laughs> and start- then stopped, looked backwards, you know, looked around <laughs> and then walked right back to where he was. He <laughs> start- he's like, care. nah, that plant yeah. was good, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> He, he did not care at all. I tried some of the boric acid. acid. I mixed a little bit with honey huh. to make a bait for uh, an entomologist buddy of mine that was in the first season, actually. Uh, he, it was his idea to leave a bait like this for them to hopefully take back to the queen because mm-hmm. the queen is excited to get some honey, mm-hmm. right? Good stuff. Yeah, it's great stuff. Right? It's got to be pretty rare for the ants. Oh, it's <laughs> sweet honey. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's some bee stuff. And the idea, the thinking was it would kill the queen who's re- doing the all the reproducing mm-hmm. and then boom, eventually the colony dies off and Didn't no, work. no luck. And I have a feeling it might be because of the guards, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the guards are a crazy, like... Like it's just that it makes you like appreciate how smart and like yeah. how advanced like these ants are. <laughs> I I always like to tell you know customers or whoever um, an entire colony of ants or even bees um, or termites or whatever um, it's they're considered to be one organism. Yeah. The the thousand or hundred thousand ants that are in the colony, they're as soon as one ant knows something. The rest of the ants know that exact same thing, and they know how to react to it, and they know how to, you know, prepare or whatever. So, um, if if one ant goes out foraging, and he comes back to the nest with the boric acid yeah, honey, yeah. or even just like a different virus, like some like some sort of fungus or whatever that that could possibly hurt the entire colony, mm-hmm. there are guards at the very entrance of the the hole. And the, the TSA for ants, right? The, the, the TSA for <laughs> ants, yeah. And, and they're, you think the TSA for humans at airports sucks. Wait till you hear about these guys. These guys take it to another level. These guys will notice that um, you're, you're, you're trying to bring something you know foreign and, and possibly yeah. dangerous into the colony. Yeah, and they'll say, "Hey, man, like that's not that's not a good idea." I don't not gonna fly. I don't buddy. know that that might just wipe out their our entire colony. <laughs> that might be the black plague of our ant colony. Yeah. And they'll take this 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 ants, um, and especially with ants, they have like almost cemeteries. Yeah, yeah. They, where they put all their dead bodies, mm-hmm. so you know it doesn't prevent more disease. Yeah. Um, and they'll Wait, take the ants. I think humans do that. <laughs> humans do that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, humans. Humans figure that one out too. But a little, a little after. Yeah, it yeah. Took, them, took them a little bit longer. The ants. Um, they'll they'll take them. They'll take them there. Or, you know, wherever it doesn't really matter all that much. Yeah. Um, the guards will take the ants and they'll kill the ants carrying the the diseased fungus or the boric acid or whatever it is. They'll kill that ant, and then the guards themselves will kill kill themselves. They'll just they'll, they'll wait there and starve to death. Wow! They'll they'll starve themselves to death. Yeah, they, because yeah, they don't they can't really kill themselves. They can't like if they could. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure they would love. <laughs> I'm sure they would love to just take out a gun and just <laughs> end it all. It's taking forever. But uh, no, they'll, they'll just wait there and just starve to death wow. because because they know that when they go back to the to the colony. There's gonna be the other guards <laughs> yeah. there, hey, and hey, they're hey. gonna be like, "Hey, wait, <laughs> you got you got some nasty going. Yeah. I'm gonna take you out there, and you know what? Now I'm gonna have to kill myself yeah. too." <laughs> so um, it's all by sense of smell and like endorphins. Yeah, and all stuff, right? sense of smell, um, and um, and just your um, pheromones, pheromones and, and yeah. all that junk. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's 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 a uh, 
it's crazy. Like, yeah, it's it's something that you know humans really just kind of can't yeah. understand. Like the whole just being able to communicate that quickly and that like f- like fluidly just from a scent. It's it's almost like telepathic. It is way, kind right? of that's that's kind yeah. of like what I think about it. Yeah. And I mean, if there were humans that had telepathic abilities, maybe it wouldn't be oh just reading minds in our the way we imagine in movies and stuff. It would be like oh they can smell certain things you're thinking or feeling, right? You know, kind of like yeah. do- dogs can smell emotions and stuff like that. Like you how know? you when you walk into a room and you can feel its full attention or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But to the to an extreme to where like you can be like, oh man, that guy's yeah. six months late on his taxes. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's about to get audited. You're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> You're fucked, I'm not trying to hang out around yeah. you. Man. <laughs> yeah. You guys better like bugs. <laughs> yeah, come on, who doesn't like bugs? Bugs this, are cool. This dog likes bugs. She likes bugs. Look at this. Come yeah. On. You like bugs? <laughs> Oh, she does. She she <laughs> like she likes to chase like moths and butterflies and stuff. That's all. I remember our old like super unathletic dog. Yeah, would just be lying down, and then a fly would be flying around. You know, in the classic, just like he just he wouldn't move like anything but his head, and just go. <laughs> Would he catch him? No, he would yeah, never yeah, catch yeah, yeah. him. Yeah, <laughs> but he would always try. Yeah, she's the same and way. I'm sure as soon as he did catch a fly, he would just freak out. And like, 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 I probably, did it. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks it's the same fly that's been bugging him for years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I finally got him. <laughs> There's a new one I the can, next day. Yeah. <laughs> and they sent another. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so you, you're also quite the pool player, right? Love me some pool. Yeah. Love me some pool. So how did you first, like realize that billiards was something you wanted to get into um so it started probably like freshman or sophomore year of high school um my brother luckily enough introduced me to this game called snooker it's uh it's britain's version of pool um and it's it's really popular in europe and even in britain i'm sure this is just because uh there's more snooker games than there are soccer games but it's more watched on tv than soccer in Britain. In Britain. It's You're kidding. Like, it's, it's more popular than soccer. I know Britain. soccer's big in Britain. Yeah, so, it's huge. Yeah, yeah, soccer is like, yeah, f- it's football. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but the, yeah, it, it's... The Brits it's, are laughing at us for calling it soccer. Right, yeah. <laughs> They're like, these, these idiots. They don't, they don't know snooker or soccer. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's, a huge, it's a huge sport over there. Yeah. Um, and what, like, at very first, what got me intrigued about it was just the simplicity of it's like tennis or it's like um like golf or whatever where the announcers and the audience have to be super quiet mm. and like and even the announcers kind of whisper yeah so it was just nice to, to watch and fall asleep <laughs> like just it was just nice and peaceful and like you hear the you hear the the, the, the pool clack. balls like clacking yeah <laughs> and all that stuff and you go oh nice shot, nice shot. <laughs> oh and uh, what's he gonna do next <laughs> um but yeah, snooker. It's just it's it's a completely different game than than what we think of um, pool, like at a bar, you know, at your friend's house or whatever. Yeah. Um, like at a bar table, the the table is seven and a half feet by. Th- oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, it, uh, a pool table at a bar is seven feet by three feet, three and a half feet. Um, but a snooker table is twelve feet by six feet. It's a lot bigger. It's a lot bigger. It's almost twice as big. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's just a complete it's it's just much more strategic to where like you have to think multiple shots ahead and you have to think about like if I like, if I miss this shot, like how am I going to leave my opponent looking? Yeah. And and a lot of the shots they take are purposely missing just so they can make it so their opponent can't make yeah. another shot. Yeah. Um and yeah, that just, you know, evolved into um, me begging my parents for for <laughs> for years until I was 18 years old um, to buy a, a a pool table like a normal you know U S pool table yeah because you're not gonna fit a snooker no, table anywhere <laughs> that's a huge table, yeah. <laughs> and I told them I, I I said like I'll buy it like I have enough money like, like, I'll buy the pool table we can put it outside like there's, if there's no room for no no room for us inside like put it outside they they have outdoor pool tables like, yeah. like put a cover over it we'll be fine like that's all I care about yeah um and they said no right like no like there's just no room for it like we don't want that outside like no 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 yeah um and then finally you know 18 years old I I moved out of the house um and the living room which I almost lived in um like it wasn't getting used anymore. 
So they finally so, got a table. So they said, Riley, like, you know. <laughs> now that you're gone. Now that you're gone. Now that, now that you're not going to be able to use the pool table as much as you would like to. Um, we should get one of those. We should get a pool table. <laughs> yeah. and so I was like, oh, awesome. You know, good enough. Better better late than never or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's a funny story. I, I went on Craigslist. Yeah. And, you know, like Craigslist has got so much stuff on there. And I found the pool, the, the one pool table I liked. I it was listed for um a thousand dollars two hundred and fifty, um and I went to the guy way out in Ore Valley, Marana. Um, I really like the pool table, and I I told the guy, you know what, I I like the pool table. I'll, I'll give you a thousand dollars for it, and he looked at me, moment of moment of silence, <laughs> and he says, I'll give it to you for eight hundred dollars. <laughs> I went deal. <laughs> And then, yeah, we got the pool table, and we got new felt on it. We got new balls, which is a huge help to to. It, it truly does improve yeah. your game. Like it, it makes it, it makes the game way easier, and especially with like bar tables. Like it, they're, the bar tables are so unlevel. Yeah, it's hard to play as well felt as has holes in yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it literally rips. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to play as well as you you know you you truly can play. Every time I played you, you're far better than I am. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's I, like a learning lesson when I'm watching you play, for sure. <laughs> the the best the best tip I ever heard, and and the, what sucks about this tip is it's hard to apply when you go to a bar, which is where most people play. Yeah. But hitting the ball softer gives you so much more of a chance to make the ball. You have more control on it. Yeah. Right? You 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 just you feel like you're actually you know like pushing the ball instead of just smacking it. Yeah. Um, and, and even more so when the ball, when the, the ball you're trying to make, um, is slowly going into the pocket rather than fastly going into the pocket. If you're off by a little, like a couple inches or whatever, um, rather than rattling out and just the, the, the pocket spitting the ball out. Yeah. Um, the, the ball will just bounce into the, into the pocket. Yeah. Or it's more likely to at least. Right. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, see, that was my problem growing up. I I think when I first learned, it was like I'm trying to hit that, <laughs> you know, and, and I, it feels so much better. It yeah, feels exactly. so good to just smack the ball and in it quick, and especially <laughs> when it goes in, it feels so good to yeah, yeah hit it super hard and in in the ball to go in. Yeah, but there's just so much a uh, higher percentage of you making it when you just hit it hard enough for the ball to just just like nice and slowly nestle itself into the pocket. Yeah. So what what other tips would you have for someone that's like trying to get better at it or at least good enough to win a few free drinks at the bar? <laughs> um, I, I would say, yeah, without like by far the biggest tip is to practice, which yeah. is the same with any other sport. Yeah, yeah. which is kind of bullshit. You know? <laughs> no, one, no one wants to just spend like hours a day fucking practicing just so they can win a couple of drinks at the bar, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, people do like I do. Like I yeah. love that. I, I love practicing pool. Like there's some I I'll play by myself all the time. Like I I don't I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, as far as just like immediate things, I would say, like it's it's all in your head. Like just just try and take a step back, look at where where you need to hit the ball, and be very confident. Confidence I'm realizing more and more is very important in pool. Um, just like telling yourself like, yeah, I can, like, I'm going to hit the ball right there. That's where I need to hit the ball. That's where I'm going to hit the ball. Yeah. And you, you keep your eye on the ball you're hitting, mm -hmm. just walk into it and stare at that ball you're hitting and just keep, stay confident. What you were saying about snooker earlier, about worrying about your leave, where you mm -hmm. leave the white ball afterwards—that's that's half a pool. That's how uh -huh. I—that's how I started getting better at, mm -hmm. like, more competitive, yep. I guess, because I was like not just thinking about what ball I'm getting yep. in, but where I'm going next, or that, or if I miss it, screwing it up for my uh -huh. for my opponent. Right. That is that is the whole that that that's the 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 second half of pool that people don't ever really think about yeah. at all because. Uh, it's hard enough to just make the ball in most of the time. Yeah. But if you're able to make the ball in and think about like, if I hit it this hard, then the cue ball will go far enough or it won't go far enough mm -hmm. um, to leave myself a good shot on the next ball. Yeah. So when you're shooting the ball you're going for right now, always try and think about the next ball you're making. Do you have a favorite shot or a favorite kind of shot you'd like to do? Um, or practice? 
Hmm. Any trick shots? Yeah, j- jumping it over. I, I would say yeah. I was I would say my favorite my favorite type of shot like it, that that's hard to make you know yeah. but just feels so good to make is when when the when the the object ball the ball you're trying to make yeah is is right on the rail and you're trying to just just run it along the rail all the way down the all the way down the table into the corner pocket yeah okay. um, and that's that's a super hard shot to you know consistently make. You could um, hit the edge anywhere. Yeah, because yeah, you you and and the best way to think about making those shots when the the ball is actually touching the rail is you want to make the cue ball touch the the object ball and the rail at the same exact time. Is there any other like trick shots that you practice yourself? Um, I love to. We'll, we'll cut to a clip of it. Yeah, like it'll this, be right uh, there. Yeah, it'll be right here. Oh, there I am! Oh, Look at oh. that's me! Oh, that's me! Somewhere. How am I sitting right there? That's ridiculous! <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, this like it's just this this little drill that I, I saw a picture of it. I didn't make it up, but um, I I do it all the time, and it, it, it's just a bunch of easy shots. Okay. Like nice and like just like. Where there's no balls like blocking each other, or there's no there's nothing like that you know should make any shot any specific ball on the table hard to make. Yeah. Um, but it's so important that you uh, you focus on where you're gonna leave the cue ball after you make the shot you're making right now. Mm. Um, that's what I really like to practice on. So are these object balls? Do you put them all over? Is it like a line? It's a it's like a like a specific kind of pattern. Okay. Um. Yeah. It's right there. You you can see. Oh it. it's kinda, yeah. It's oh, specific. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's just like just like that. It's just like that. Yeah. It's kind of like like you got you got the balls right there, and the, there's more balls in the middle, and there's there's, yeah. the, there's the two balls, the row, the the two rows of balls on the, on the ends. Yeah. Um, it's all good stuff. Yeah. And um, but uh, yeah, just just um. And also another really important thing um, for, you know, kind of newer pool players is to try and hit the ball in the center, hit the cue ball in the center of the ball with, okay. with your stick. Yeah. Um, because when you, when you hit it on the left side or the right side or the top left or whatever, your top right side, yeah. that's going to make the cue ball curve. And even if, you know, you're aiming perfectly – perfectly to to make the ball you're trying to make if you put left hand spin on it the cue ball is going to move and and make it so you miss your ball it's gonna like yeah go it's gonna the, the cue ball is actually gonna you know swerve to the to the right or swerve to the left so you have to be like really subtle with your top spin bottom spin yeah uh, if you're if you're trying to add top spin or um or bottom spin or um left or right left or right yeah. yeah and and i like even i like i've been playing for you know a few years now and I, I'm still not very comfortable at all with side spin. So if you had to break it up by like percentages, how much of the game do you think is physics and how much is geometry? Um, how do you mean? Like, I feel like physics, you don't think that you have to have a basic level of understanding of physics. Like, even if you don't realize it, mm-hmm. you know, like just understanding what happens when the ball hits. Oh, a that's way, a good point. Right? You know? I would say I would say geometry is way more important than, yeah. than the physics in it, because because physics does come into play a lot. Yeah. Like if you're if you're like slicing a ball like barely, mm-hmm. then the cue ball is gonna put side spin on the ball you're trying to make. Okay. You know, because because yeah. you're you're just hitting the very edge of that ball, right? So that ball is gonna be spinning sideways. Yeah. And that's gonna end up, you know. Uh, uh, in fe- uh, affecting the the trajectory of the ball you're trying to make. It could even spin in place, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be crazy. Yeah. I've never seen that before. That would be, that would be incredible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, physics does come into play a little bit. Yeah. But that that's pretty advanced. So like, the angles are more. The angles are yeah, where you're really trying to look at. Yeah, okay. you're, you're you're trying to you know see the line from the the ball you're trying to make to the pocket. And you're trying to put the cue ball in in the middle of that line. So do you ever pull out your protractor and sl- slap it down on the table? I do. Yeah, I'm a, I, I'm a big fan of the compass. Oh know? yeah, yeah okay. the compass. The I, compass I thought, is good. Isn't the compass the one where you're making circles? Yeah, I don't <laughs> I really know. The protractor. Yeah, you know you're that. Yeah. The protractor is a little bit better. The yeah. protractor is a little bit better. Either it's either that or it's the compass that tells uh-huh. you the direction. I don't think that one would be yeah. very helpful. <laughs> but if if you're the the type of person to to practice pool yeah shoot the shame shoot the same shot over and over again yeah. like that is huge help like just 
just try and lock it in your memory that w- when I'm trying to slice the ball like this or when I'm trying to hit the ball, you know, straight on like this, yeah, this is what it looks like when I'm hitting it. Yeah. This is like, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it might not feel like you're hitting it the right way. Yeah. But that's just, you, you know, just get used from to inexperience doing, or yeah. whatever, like you just got to get used to it. You just get used to doing like every kind of shots. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes up in a game, pff, you're done. Yeah. It. And yeah. that's, that's the whole thing where like the, just the same with any other sport, like it just really takes a lot of practice. Like yeah. you're not going to, you're not going to listen to this podcast and <laughs> become a great pool player. Like just hopefully, you know, you get, hey, you could get started more, though. But yeah. Hopefully this inspires you because yeah. pool is awesome. Like, yeah, it is. It's a great thing to, to, to my favorite thing about it is, it's a solo sport. It's a solo, you know, team or not team sport, but it's a solo sport where, you know, you're, you decide the fate of the entire game or the entire career or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's all, and it's all in your head and, and there's, there's not, it doesn't matter if you're fat. It doesn't matter if you're skinny. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter if, you know, it's all inclusive. Yeah. yeah. If, if you wear glasses or if you don't wear glasses, like yeah. you, you can, you can play and what you identify uh-huh. as. Yeah. <laughs> you could be a bird. I don't care. <laughs> well, Riley, thank you for coming on. It was so much fun having you here and great blast. Great time. Pool oh with man. You. It was a great yeah, time. That Look was, at that. That was, Holy that shit. Did you see that, that shot right that, there? That was crazy. That, that was unbelievable. I can't believe you made that I one. I can't believe it. Hey, well, that's why you're on. It's you know, all about practice, man. Yeah, you you're, just gotta, you're skilled. You, you got to get it in your head, man. <laughs> you're manifesting that See shot. it happen, make it happen. Yeah, there you go. Well, look at that. You've almost made it to the very end of the episode. And for that, I'd like to say thank you. You really have no idea how much I appreciate it. As for the rest of the content creator begging, I'm going to leave that up to Riley. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and... uh smash the out of that like button <laughs> or i mean the 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 notification button that one too all, yeah, all the, the bell buttons. the bell icon press every single uh-huh. goddamn button yeah on if your you computer see a screen. button <laughs> <laughs> click the button but not the x button